Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are going to discuss today examination of the gastrointestinal tract. First, to start with, you should take permission from the parents, from the mother or the father. You should introduce yourself and sterilize your hand. Examination of gastrointestinal tract start like any other system in the body by inspection, general examination. This is Muhammad, six years old. He is lying comfortable, conscious, no dysmorphic feature. Dysmorphic feature is important because we have many dysmorphic features that have associated gastrointestinal problem like Down syndrome, they may have duodenal atresia or Hirschsprung disease. Or you may have thalassemic fasces and the patient have a huge splenomegaly. Or you may have mucopolysaccharidosis and the patient will have hepatosplenomegaly. So you should look for any dysmorphic feature, level of consciousness, is the patient looks ill or well, and you are, then you are coming, going to examine uh, the body build also. You should see if, if, if the patient looks thin or good body build for his age. Then you are going to examine the face, the eye, you are going, you are examining for jaundice, and for pallor of the conjunctiva. Then you are going to examine the mouth. The important thing that, that you are going to look in the mouth for dental caries, stomatitis, angular uh, chelosis, which, is, which are sign of vitamin deficiency, iron, B12, and folate. Also for gum hypertrophy, you, are, you look, and the tongue for glossitis, which occur also in vitamin and mineral deficiency. The tongue will appear red and swollen. Then you are going to examine the hand. The important thing that we are going to look for coelonychia and leconychia. Coelonychia occur in iron deficiency anemia and leconychia occur in hypoalbuminemia. Then you are going to examine for pallor, especially in the creases of the hand, and you are going to look for palmar erythema. Don't forget to examine for tendon xanthoma, which occur in hyperlipidemia and occur in the extensor surface, and widening of the wrist in case of rickets. This is clubbing also is important. You can examine for fluctuation of the nail. Then you can examine for the Schamruth angle to exclude the presence of clubbing. Clubbing can occur in the in GIT disease, like in cystic fibrosis, chronic liver disease, and an inflammatory bowel disease. After examining uh, general examination, the face and the hand, we are going to examine local examination of the abdomen. Remember that examination of blood pressure is part of the GIT, but usually you can ask to postpone examination of blood pressure to the end of the examination. Now we are going to examine local examination of the abdomen. And uh, remember, you should take permission before exposing the child, from the child or from the family. Proper examination, you need to do good exposure from the nipple to the knee. So you are not going to miss presence of gynecomastia or spider nearby. To start with, you, we are going to start by inspecting the abdomen. You can stand at the foot of the bed and you are going to look for symmetry of the abdomen. Uh, is the umbilicus is central or not? Is there is fullness in the flank? This is an important point, the symmetry, and if there is distended abdomen or not. So, the abdomen is symmetrical, moving with respiration. The umbilicus is central. There is no fullness in the flank. There is no caput midosi, which, which are dilated vein around the umbilicus. And there is no scar of previous operation, no spider nevi, no gynecomastia, no dilated vein. If there is citria, you should, stria, you should mention it also. This is the important point in the inspection of the abdomen. Full, fullness in the flank or bulging of the flank is an important sign, could be uh, marker of ascites. After examining the abdomen, inspecting the abdomen, 
we are going to start palpation. Palpation, we are going to start by superficial palpation. Before doing palpation, you should ask the child if there is tender area. If there is no tender area in the abdomen, you are going to start from the left iliac fossa. You will do superficial palpation. The aim of superficial palpation is to look for any superficial tenderness and superficial mass. Okay? This is the superficial palpation. Then we are going to do deep palpation, which is the same as superficial palpation, in order to look for any deep mass or deep tenderness. Localized tenderness in abdominal examination occur usually in case of hepatitis or appendicitis, while generalized tenderness can occur in case of peritonitis or mesenteric leaf adenitis. So the abdomen is soft, there is no mass. Then we are going to examine for organomegal. First, we are going to start with the liver. Examining the liver, we usually start from the right iliac fossa, and with the edge of your finger, you can palpate the liver. This is the liver, so this patient has hepatomegaly. When there is hepatomegaly, you have to measure how many centimeters below the costal margin the liver is palpable. You can use the tape measure and present your finding in centimeter. Avoid making marker, marking, marking the abdomen of the child. This is not acceptable. So, you will measure how many centimeters below the costal margin. Then you are going to do liver span examination. Liver span examination usually done at the midclavicular line. You are going to start to percuss, usually from the third intercostal space and downward. Okay, we start with the, from the third here. And by palpating or percussing from downward, this is the liver, so you are going to measure this part to show the liver span. Also, the important thing in examining the liver, when there is a large liver, you are going to present your finding that the liver is 5 cm below costal margin is palpable, and the liver span is 12 cm. You should describe the liver. First, tenderness. When you are going to palpate the abdomen, the important point, you should look at the face of the child. When, the, when there is facial expression of pain, mean that there is tenderness. So, in superficial and deep palpation and examining the liver, you should look at the facial expression of the child, because when there is tenderness, you will find grimace in the face of the child. So, when you are examining the liver, look at the face. The liver may be tender, especially in acute hepatitis. The consistency of the liver is important. You should mention, is it firm, soft, or uh, hard? Usually, in acute hepatitis, the liver will be soft liver and tender. And the surface of the liver, is it smooth or nodular? Like in uh, liver cirrhosis, the surface will be nodular, while in acute viral hepatitis, the surface will be smooth. And the age of the liver, the age, half of the liver, you should mention, is it sharp or rounded? In acute hepatitis, it will be sharp, while in chronic disease, like uh, metabolic disease and storage disease, the age will be rounded. So you should mention the age, the consistency, is it tender or not? You should look, whenever you are palpating the abdomen, you should look at the face of the child. After finishing examination of the liver, you should examine for the spleen. Examination for the spleen starts also from the right iliac fossa. You can support the ribs with your hand and turn the child to your side. If you suspect there is splenomegaly, you can do this maneuver, support the thoracic cage and look for spleen. Usually, Every palpable spleen means there is splenomegaly because the spleen need to be twice its original size to be palpable. While the liver can be normally palpable, especially in uh, infant and young children, about one to two centimeters below costal margin, normally can be palpable. 
After finishing examination of the spleen, you can now examine for the kidney. And remember, the kidney are by manually palpable, or what, what, what we call it, balutable. So you can support from posteriorly, and anteriorly you are going to palpate. Okay, remember there are many differences between the kidney and the spleen. First, that the spleen, you, you cannot get above the spleen, and the spleen has splenic notch, and the spleen moving with the respiration. And on percussing over the spleen, it will be dull, while the kidney, the percussion above it will be resonant, because there is bowel above. This is the, and the spleen moving, as we said, with this respiration. This is the main difference between the spleen and the kidney. After finishing palpation, you can now examine uh, percussion. Percussing the abdomen, you can start from the right iliac fossa, and then the direction of the spleen, and you can percuss the bladder. Usually, the abdomen is resonant, except full bladder or hepatic uh, enlargement or splenomegaly. This area would be dull for percussion. Otherwise, the abdomen is resonant in percussion. You can start from the right iliac fossa. See, the liver is dull because he, he had hepatomegaly. Then in the direction of the spleen, then you can percuss for the bladder and percuss for fluid. Percussing for fluid, examining the for fluid, we call it examination for ascites. We have four indications that make you uh, do examination for ascites. First, if there is hepatomegaly. Second, if you find any stigmata of a chronic liver disease, pulmonary erythema, clubbing of the finger, spider nevi, jaundice, all these stigmata of a chronic liver disease make you uh, do the examination for ascites. Other indication is generalized edema. When there is generalized edema, you should examine for ascites. So, and the, the fourth indication, when the abdomen is visibly distended. By inspection, when you find the abdomen is visibly distended, you should examine for ascites. Examination for ascites, we usually do it first by shifting dullness. By shifting dullness, we start at the middle. It will be resonant because at the center of the abdomen, there will be bowel, and the bowel is filled with gases, so it will be resonant. As you are going to the flank, you may the percussion may become dull, because fluid will be in the flank. You will fix your finger at the side where dullness is elicited. Then you are going to turn the child. Okay, and you are going to wait for 20 seconds in order that the fluid will go downward. So, the area which was dull in percussion now will be, after 20 seconds, will be resonant because the fluid descended to the lower part of the body. Then you are going to do percussion to the center of the abdomen and here the area will be dull. So, the dullness is shifted from the flank to the center of the abdomen. This is shifting dullness. The other examination is transmitted thrill. Transmitted thrill, you can use the hand of the child, like this, and you will put your hand, and gently, you will do this movement. If there is fluid, you can feel transmitted thrill. This is examination for ascites, and we said there are four indications to do this examination. Remember that examination of the abdomen, you should examine the inguinal orifices to exclude the presence or absence of hernia. Because sometimes the child presented with distended abdomen, feature of internal obstruction, and if you didn't examine the hernial orifice, you may miss obstructed hernia. So, inguinal lymph node and hernial orifices are important part of the examination. Also, examination of the genitalia is important especially for scrotal oedema, for undescended testes, all these parts are important uh, of the examination. So, you should ask permission that for examination of the inguinal lymph node, hernial orifices, and genitalia of the child. 
As far as we are talking about the genitalia, remember that examination of the perianal area also is part of the abdominal examination. Especially we, when you suspect that the child have, has inflammatory bowel disease. So you are going to look for skin tag, perianal abscess or fissure uh, by inspecting the perianal area. Also you are going to look for any excoriation around the anus which occur in cases with chronic diarrhea due to lactose intolerance. This is examination of the abdomen interiorly. After finishing that, we are going to examine the abdomen from the bag. From the bag, the important thing, we are going to do an inspection of the bag for any scar, any uh, skin lesion, okay, uh, any spinal dystrophism, neural tube defect, and then after inspecting, we are going to examine for sacral edema. Examination for sacral edema. And we are going to examine for tenderness in the loin. Especially in case of pyelonephritis. Remember that uh, perianal examination is also part of the abdominal examination. After finishing that, remember that you should examine for oedema. Ideally, you should press for one minute. The other thing that we miss in the examination of the abdomen is auscultating the abdomen. Auscultation of the abdomen is also is part of the examination. After uh, examining the abdomen, after inspection, palpation, percussion, we do usually auscultation of the abdomen. We are going to look for bowel sound, usually in the McBurney point. Usually we are going to listen for 30 seconds. If there is no bowel sound, you should listen for two minutes. The other thing that you are going to auscultate in the abdomen is that you are going to auscultate for renal brewing, usually just above and lateral to the umbilicus. This is the side to examine for renal brewery. After finishing the examination, remember that examining the blood pressure is part of the examination of the GIT. Also, you can put the growth parameter on the growth chart. After finishing the examination, you should cover the patient and thank the patient and the family. This is an important part of the examination. Thank you.